What better way to start out a series of movies and TV shows turned into video games than with the game that came from a movie that came from a game? And no, I'm not talking about Street Fighters. Hey guys, this is Vampire Bride, and today we're talking about Ratchet and Clank. We're going to be talking about the original PlayStation 2 version and the 2016 reboot along with the 2016 movie, and a little bit about its franchise. There are a lot of games in the Ratchet and Clank franchise and only one movie. There's the original trilogy on the PlayStation 2 along with Ratchet and Clank Deadlock. There's the Ratchet and Clank Future Saga and then quite a few that were made after that. There are also two mobile games, Ratchet and Clank Going Mobile, one of which reminds me of Temple Run with some shooting thrown in. The original Ratchet and Clank came out in 2002 on the PlayStation 2. It starts off showing Ratchet working on his ship, then shows Clank escaping from Drex Warbots. Ratchet then sees something come crashing out of the sky. He runs over to investigate, and that's where he finds Clank. Clank wants to get to Captain Quark, but doesn't have a ship. So when he sees that Ratchet has a ship, he says that he will help Ratchet fix the ship if Ratchet will take him to see Captain Quark. Ratchet agrees, and the two are off. The two go to many different planets throughout the Salona galaxy looking for Captain Quark, who then betrays them. They find out that Quark was working with Drek the whole time. In this game, Captain Quark is more pretending to be a hero. He's more of a fraud taking credit for other people's heroic actions. And he likes the publicity that Drek is offering him. You help people on different planets throughout the game. And in doing so, you earn gadgets. There's a lot of back and forth in the game, and by that I mean you will need a gadget on the planet you're currently on, but it's not located on that planet. So you'll have to go to another planet to obtain the gadget, and then come back to where you were to proceed in the game. There are usually two to three paths on each planet and a set of missions that you have to complete. The duo spends the game going after Drek, while Ratchet's more interested in seeking revenge on Captain Quark, but luckily for Clank, finding Drek means finding Quark. Ratchet and Clank bicker throughout the whole game, but towards the end, Ratchet realizes that what they're dealing with is a lot bigger than themselves, and he apologizes to Clank, and they get the same mindset and end up both going after Drek. Now that they're on the same mindset, the two go after Drek. They end up launching him into his own planet, making him explode. The two escape, but get injured in the process. Ratchet takes Clank back to his shop and fixes him up. There are a few small annoyances in the game, such as wonky camera angles or not being able to move the camera how you need to, and sometimes when you try to jump, Ratchet will just kind of fall off of the platform. Also, on a moving platform, you can't jump off, which is kind of annoying because you're all go, 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 and then it makes you go a lot slower. I loved each planet scenery. For a PlayStation 2 era game, it's absolutely stunning. Even with today's high resolution, very detailed games, I feel like the PlayStation 2 Ratchet and Clank is still extremely playable. In my opinion, it definitely stood the test of time. The movie and the reboot follow basically the same story. The movie literally has cutscenes from the game in its footage. The movie got a really hard rap, but I rather enjoyed it. Maybe it wasn't worth going to see in theaters, but considering I got it out of the bargain bin at Walmart and watched it multiple times, it was definitely worth it. The movie was in development before the game, but the game hit the public before the movie did. That being said, for those who played the game before they watched the movie, the movie wasn't much of anything new. That and the lack of advertisement for the movie are two of its biggest downfalls. The movie and the game start and end differently, but the middle is mostly the same. The movie starts off showing Drek and the Blarg using the Deplanetizer to destroy the fourth planet. Ratchet then learns of what's going on, and from there it's mostly the same as the game. The reboot starts off showing Captain Quark in prison, getting a new cellmate named Shiv Helix, who of course is a big fan of Captain Quark's, and wants to hear all about the story of how he ended up in prison. The game is then narrated by Captain Quark, giving it a different perspective and some added humor. It then shows Ratchet the Lombax on planet Velden, dreaming of doing something bigger with his life, such as becoming a Galactic Ranger. Coincidentally, it's the same day they... Captain Quark and the Galactic Rangers are holding tryouts for a new ranger, also coincidentally in Ratchet City. Ratchet hurries off and he passes the course with ease. 
But Captain Quark turns him down because of his criminal past. He says that he is too wild and that that's his thing. Kind of foreshadowing the jealousy that later consumes Captain Quark. Meanwhile, on Planet Core 2, the villain of the game, Chairman Drek, is having an army of war bots built, overseen by Dr. Nefarious, who you later find out was previously a galactic ranger turned evil and is now working for Chairman Drek. In the PlayStation 2 version, Dr. Nefarious doesn't show up until the second game of the trilogy. The machine building the war bots malfunctions and makes a defect. The defect finds out what Drek's plans are to use the deplanetizer to destroy planets and make a new one for his own people because their planet has become too polluted. He barely escapes in a stolen ship and comes crashing down on Velden, where Ratchet is moping because he didn't make Galactic Ranger. Ratchet sees the crash and curiously runs over to check it out. He finds injured Clank and takes him back to his shop to fix him up. Clank tells Ratchet about Dreg's plans, and Ratchet lies, saying that he's good friends with the Galactic Rangers, and convinces Clank that he can help. The two go off to Planet Kerwan, where the Galactic Rangers are, but when they arrive, the planet is already under attack. Ratchet and Clank save the day, and Captain Quark reluctantly makes them new Rangers. He's not happy about it because all of the publicity that Ratchet is already receiving. The two then travel to different planets, just like in the original, collecting gadgets that you need to proceed in the game. Ratchet is loved by everybody and Captain Quark is filled with jealousy. Dr. Nefarious gives Drek the idea to use Captain Quark's jealousy to their advantage. They recruit Captain Quark, promising not to hurt any of the Galactic Rangers, but of course, Chairman Drek does not keep his promise. The Galactic Rangers try to stop Drek from deplanetizing the planet Novalis, but were unable to in time because of Quark's betrayal. Ratchet then returns home feeling like he failed as a Galactic Ranger. The planet Novalis had been deplanetized, but the citizens were able to be evacuated beforehand. The Galactic Rangers try to get Ratchet to come back, letting him know that it wasn't a total failure, and that they still needed him or else more planets could be deplanetized. The team tries again to destroy the deplanetizer, and Ratchet fights Quark. He convinces Quark that he doesn't want to be known for this betrayal. Quark agrees, and then all that's left is defeating Dr. Nefarious. The game's end cutscene shows Captain Quark talking to Shiv while they're out picking up trash. Ratchet shows up in his ship, and Shiv takes off in it. Does this mean that there's going to be another game in the series? There are similar enemies and levels, but the levels are placed differently throughout each game. Many of the gadgets are the same, from the hoverboard you need to complete Skid Marks's race, to the magna boots you need to get to certain parts of the levels. However, in the newer game, there is a jetpack instead of just a thruster pack, and it definitely adds a lot to the game. It helps you go places quicker and easier, and adds a lot of fun. In both games, you get infobots to figure out what you're supposed to do next and figure out more about Drek's plans. I call it a reboot, but it's more of a rebuild of Ratchet and Clank. It has a lot of differences in the storyline, but it also has many, many similarities as the original Ratchet and Clank. A lot of people say that the 2016 reboot fails in the story department compared to the 2002 original and the other games in the Ratchet and Clank series, partially due to Ratchet's character building. In the original, Ratchet becomes the character needed for the game. By that, I mean he didn't dream of becoming a galactic ranger or doing something huge. But along the way, in doing so, he figured out that he fit the part very well. Whereas in the new one, it's his dream and he goes to achieve it. I would understand them saying that the story isn't that great in the new one if it was Ratchet just going over to the tryouts and being accepted right then. But he had to fight and went through many failures to get where he got. I prefer the kinder, goofier Ratchet in the reboot than the harsh, snarky version in the 2002 original. Being that it's the first game in the Ratchet and Clank series that I played, I could be a little bit biased. I love the game, including its story, and I don't think that it's inferior to the 2002 original. Let me know what you think. Did the story in the newer Ratchet and Clank fall flat, or do you prefer the newer one? Weapons are upgradable in the reboot and can be upgraded up to a level 10. Using rare titanium that you find by smashing crates, just like how you find bolts except for less often. It is a well done upgrade system. 
You get to choose which weapons you want to upgrade and how you want to upgrade them. It is simple to navigate and adds a nice element to the game. Whereas the PlayStation 2 version, you cannot upgrade your weapons until after your first playthrough. You use the gold bolts that you found throughout the game to get gold weapons, which is the upgrade version of the weapon. While that does give it some replayability value, I would rather be able to upgrade the first time through. At least the gold bolts in the older version have some use though. In the newer version, they have practically no use. You get an ultimate explorer trophy and that's it. So if you're completionist, that's wonderful, but if not, there's no point in going out of your way to find all the golden bo bolts. I found myself needing to buy ammo quite often in the 2002 version. Whereas in the newer version, it wasn't as necessary because I could easily just switch to a different weapon as there were many that I liked. But in the 2002 version, I like to stick with one weapon to do a certain part. Weapons in the original are the bomb glove, which is self-explanatory, simply a bomb you throw. The mine glove sends out a mine that explodes upon contact with an enemy. The activation range increases when you use the taunter over the mines. The taunter gets the enemy's attention. The blaster is a medium range pistol with a high rate of fire. I used it most in Kogor Refinery on planet Orkson along with the Glove of Doom. The Sup Cannon sucks in small enemies then spits them out. It doesn't require ammo, so it's great when you're in a pinch. I didn't use it much except for on the resort to kill all of the spiky puffer fish. I found it to be the best weapon for the job. The Devastator is a missile launcher that gives lots of damage and is great for larger enemies. The Walloper packs a punch but is pretty slow. It's quicker to just use your wrench. The Visibomb is necessary to use on one of the planets towards the end, but other than that, I didn't use it much. The Decoy Glove sends out balloon ratchets to distract enemies from you. The Drone Device is small drones that circle around you, protecting you from enemy fire and blowing up on enemies upon contact. You equip them and they do your, their job, and you can also use another weapon while they circle around you. The Tesla Claw isn't an option until near the end of the game, but just shoots out electric bolts. The Morpho Ray was designed to disintegrate enemies, but instead turns them into chickens. It also isn't an option until near the end of the game. Honestly, in most cases, I find it easier to just use the wrench, but some of the weapons have places where they work the best. In the reboot, there is the fusion grenade, which is simply a grenade you throw. The Groovatron sends out a disco ball that makes the enemies near it start to dance. It even works on bosses. Works great when you are getting overwhelmed with enemies and in boss fights, and definitely adds some humor watching your enemies dance during a fight. Bringing dance to a heavy weaponry fight? Predator Launcher. When you hold down the fire button, it gets missiles ready to fire, highlighting the enemies you are aiming for and firing multiple missiles. The Warmonger is simply a rocket launcher, but one of the stronger weapons in the game. The Combustor fires hot plasma balls at a medium rate of fire. The Proton Drum sends out multiple destructive waves in a circle from a drum that you threw out. Mr. Zircon is there to kill. He floats by your side, shooting at enemies, and says some interesting comments. The Pixelizer pixelizes enemies to death. I used it a lot on the alien snappers. Plasma Striker is a sniper gun. The Buzz Blades. They're round saw blades that you can shoot out and can ricochet to hit the enemy multiple times. The Sheepinator turns enemies into sheep. Once leveled up all the way to a level 10, instead of turning enemies into a helpless white sheep, it turns them into black attack sheep that then attack the remaining enemies nearby. There are also a few weapons that make appearances in both the 2002 and 2016 game. The Pyrocitor or Flamethrower is great for use when surrounded by enemies. The Glove of Doom releases Agents of Doom like little minions to temporarily help you defeat the enemies in the close vicinity. And of course, the well-known Rhino, the most powerful weapon of the game by far. Even defeating the end boss, Dr. Nefarious, is a breeze with the Rhino. Bolts are easier to obtain in the newer game than in the original. You get fewer bolts per enemy and broken crate in the original than you do in the newer one. You can pretty easily get all of the weapons in one playthrough in the 2016 reboot without having to go back and grind. 
but in the original you have to either do a second playthrough to get all the weapons, especially the Rhino, which costs a steep 150,000 bolts, or go back and grind using your metal detector to find hidden bolts. There is also a well-known glitch where you phase through a wall and then jump down onto the hoverboard racetrack. You then use your taunter and hold down the weapon button. As long as you hold the button down, bolts will be coming your way. If you hold the button down all night, you will finally be able to afford the Rhino. In the new one, you have to collect Rhino Hollow cards and trade them in to get the Rhino. So the big question, does the reboot hold up to the standards of the other games? And do I consider this a successful game from a movie? Or in this case, a game from a movie from a game? It should be pretty obvious from this video that I love both of the games. In my opinion, the rebooted version more than stood up to the standards of the older games. The game was definitely a success. And in my opinion, so was the movie. Even though it was criticized harshly, it's still a win in my book.